action. He is here. Angle, angle. No, he's not. I don't even see him. Don't move your mouth too much. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to get to watch movies a lot. You know, we were uh, one of the few families that had cable. It was called on TV at the time, and um, you know, I, I really enjoyed it. I was always taken aback. I got to go to a few uh, movies as, as a kid on the matinees, but they were all uh, Mexican films. Uh, they would bring them to the to the U.S. and they screen them at the local movie house. Um, and I thought it was really incredible because I thought when I would see the big screen, I thought that like, you know, they were alive on the other side, but it wasn't, you know, so I was like, oh, okay, whatever. take what I saw in my mind and, and draw it and try to imitate it or do better or improvise on it even more you know what would I have done different I would have done this I would have added this I would have added that and it was cool you know I had all these drawings all the time but it's just like man how can I make these things come alive you know it, it's they're just sitting there I couldn't do anything so then I started, I started taking animation and uh, that's when I was very amazed as to how you know I can make uh, the cartoons come alive you know by the time I got to college it was just incredible I knew what I wanted and uh, and it was good you know then I got to take my uh, first live-action movie course which is a, a requisite that I needed and um, I, I took it and I was like wow this is this is way better this was after taking a few animation classes and I was like man this is pretty cool you know it's faster you get to do your, your story even quicker you know with animation you know if I keep going at it you know I, I don't mind it but it starts to get to a point where you need like a lot of people to help you draw your in-betweens for your drawings and stuff. So I decided just to, to go for, for live action uh, once uh, I started going to college. So how are we going to take him home? You'll see. Grease Bean came to my mind uh, when I was in animation. I did a storyboard about uh, a little girl who finds a dead clown in the, in the, in the forest. And it was just like a real quick, less than a minute skit. So it was from point A to point B. Point B being that, you know, they find the, they did, the kids have fun with the clown for a little bit. They play with him, have like little parades with it. And then the dad finds it in the tool shed. The dad calls the cops. Cops come arrest dad. Dad gets thrown in the can. And uh, like the kids in the middle of it all decide to go ditch him at McDonald's. They slap a red wig on him. And, uh, and they ditch him there at the Golden Arches. Um, but then at the time I met up with Roger, I showed him the storyboard. And he's like, man, this is a pretty cool story. However, you should make it live action. I was like, yeah, I should, shouldn't I? And that's when we wanted to do the, the Grease Paint film. Um, originally there was supposed to be a, an, an opening, a different opening for the movie, which is something that Roger had shot. And it was a, uh, just almost as if we're watching a TV show. And it was called Bumbles Comes Home, Bumbles a Clown. <laughs> Everybody, welcome to Bubbles Comes Home! <laughs> Bubbles, everybody, Bubbles is going to battle! Woo! <laughs> um, of course, we couldn't use it. Uh, one thing is, uh, since uh, our, our classes were very remedial at the film school I was going to, there wasn't any way that we can transfer the footage into the 2.2 gigabyte orb, orb disk. And secondly, his name wasn't Bumbles anymore, it was Grease Paint the Clown, even though we never said it, but we just named the movie Grease Paint. And that's how it came to be. It was shot uh, in two suburbs in, from, of Chicago. Uh, one was Willow Springs, Illinois, uh, and that shot is just the bridge. You know, every time I would pass by from work going home, um, 
I would always see that bridge. I was like, I gotta shoot something. I gotta shoot something there. You know, and sure enough, the opportunity came to do this, and I was like, oh, perfect. You know, I found my shot. This is where we're gonna shoot it. And then uh, the rest of the movie, which takes place in the neighborhood in the house, is in my parents' house uh, when they were living in Orland Park, Illinois, at the time. And I love. I mean, you know, the neighborhood was great. I loved living there because you know I would just sit out of uh, my window, and my desk was right by my window. I always overlooked the neighborhood, and it was cool because you could just like do skits and do your little set design and stuff. Uh, of the settings where you wanted your stories to take place. And it was a really nice contrast with the story that we were telling as well. Uh, Christopher, uh, I met him at Columbia College as well. Um, I was, we were uh, assigned this project, which was our first, uh, I suppose it was, had to be like a one minute to two minute tops uh, piece. And um, we shot with the Bolex camera. And I really wasn't very, I wasn't such a big fan of the Bolex because you're still very limited to what you can do. It's, it's a good camera but it's more like a second unit type stuff that you want to shoot with it you know and uh, I I was reading about other cameras that they had at the at the advanced camera department and the only way I could check that out was if I got a qualified uh, DP uh, to come and do that for me so I found a student in the form of Chris and I told him what I wanted and since my since the movie has like some very intricate shots some zoom ins and zoom outs you know, you can't really achieve that too much with a cam with a Bolex, <laughs> unless you mean you really tie it up good and you have a bunch of people puppeteering the camera. I mean, that's the only way you would do it. But we didn't have that kind of a time because we. Should. Chris looked at the at the treatment. It wasn't even a script at all, and um, it was just a few paragraphs. And he really liked it. And he really saw the visual potential in it. And you know, it's like I want to work with you. I want to do this when. And sure enough, the rest is history. Working with the kids was uh, kind of like a, a challenge because normally like the other movies that I had done, the short films, <coughs> was working with, with teenagers and adults. You know, there wasn't really anything there, you know, you just tell them what you do and, and they do what you call action. With the kids it was a little bit different. Um, you got to really get into their mindset and uh, try to see life from their point of view. And since I'm kind of a big goofball a lot of the times as well, you know, I, I find it very easy to, to really, you know, fall into that, that state of mind and just goof around with them at the same time and then kind of get the performances that I really wanted. Also, you know, these kids were, were not uh, professional actors, you know, so the good thing is there was, really weren't any speaking parts, you know, it was all shot without sound, so it was already in the matter of cutting, but everything worked out really good. The creepiness of the movie, you know, I really like the, the, the tone to it because of the, of the neighborhood that it takes place in, the lighting, uh, kind of very Norish, you know, and uh, we see little Andy coming down the stairs going into the, um, into the boiler room and we find out that he keeps grease painting, you know. It's supposed to make the audience feel kind of uneasy and I guess it really did its job because of the few screens that it had, people are like, what the hell? You know, they saw it at school and they're like, Okay, beautifully shot, you know, but you know, it's still got people thinking and it's like good, you know, this is like, these are the kind of movies that I want to make. I want to have people thinking all the time, you know, and just got to be one step ahead of them all the time. One of the biggest problems with, with Columbia College, um, I guess uh, the teachers really don't take your, your work very seriously because, um, you know, I, I decided to check out an advanced camera and uh, when I got my footage back, it was not the look that we we had achieved you know everything was just bland there was no color correction uh, they didn't time it to the grade card and that kind of screwed me over really bad so you know I went up to the teachers and I was like you know what actually the teacher's aide which I believe that's what Marin was um, I was like I want this footage retransferred no we can't do it because there's other students and we can't just make the exception for you I'm like well uh, I'm paying for the class you know this is a very expensive class oh but it's only your first short film so you don't have to worry about it uh, you, what you want to worry about is when you get more advanced. I'm like, well, aren't you guys prepping us up for for what you know what we should be expecting? We shouldn't settle for less. You know, I go to get a job in Hollywood, and I pull this crap, and they're gonna fire me right on the spot. So is that what you're telling me? You know, kept their trap shut, and you know, no, we're not gonna do it, and that's it. All right then. So you know, I was upset. I told Chris. Chris is like, okay, don't worry. My dad will pay for the for a new transfer. You know, I was like, God, Jesus. You know, it was 300 bucks, and that's a lot of money. 
So we went to uh, to Filmworkers Astral and uh, we we transferred it and we had it widescreened as well. <clears throat> so uh, I got my footage back and I went up to them. I was like, "Look, erase whatever you have in that orb and put this in there." No, we're not going to do it. All right, fine. So then I went to uh, over their heads and talked to the department head. I'm like, "Look, this is BS." Um, I'm paying a lot of money for this class, and I've invested a lot of time, a lot of pre-production, um, and they're just not doing anything. They did not time my movie to what I wanted on the grade card. This this is all thrown off. This is not the quality that I wanted. And then your one of your professors has the uh, one of your professors has the audacity to tell me that no, oh, it's only your first film. I mean, what is that? What is that claiming on your department? You know. Well, he's just like, gave me the rouse. Oh, that's not the point. You know, you shouldn't. Yes, you should. You have to take this seriously. You know, I want this redone. Or give me my money back. You know, because I, I'm, I'm spending a lot of money. You know, and that's not fair. You know, finally, okay, fine. You know, I, I was getting on their nerves like crazy. So, sure enough, I went. they went and retransferred it. So, I'm editing uh, one night at Columbia. And uh, the boyfriend of Marin, his name was Jose, her boyfriend at the time, you know, was also a teacher's aide there. And he got really pissed off, you know, he's like, man, you know what, that's not right, you shouldn't go over people's heads, you know, because, you know, we can't just make the exception for you. And that kind of really, you know, that was it, that really ticked me off. I'm like, well, you know what, you know, then I went off on him, you know, there were a bunch of students, you know, and I know I was raising my voice and he's like, no, 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 calm down, calm down. I'm like, no, BS, I'm not going to calm down, blah, blah, blah. You know, that's not right. You shouldn't even harass me about this. You know, I'm paying a lot of money for the school. And, you know, finally you just laid off and I got to make my movie, showed it to the class. They were amazed. You know, the professor kind of a little reprimanded a little bit also. He's like, you know, you weren't supposed to use a DP. I'm like, well, whatever. I can do whatever I want. And that was it. You know, but um, you want to take uh, filmmaking, you know, take the basics at your school. But once you're ready to make your movie, make it on your own. Uh, no teacher can teach you how to write your own movie. They cannot teach you your own vision. Your own vision is your own, so uh, make it a good one. Set? Score. Right. Right. We're going to have to roll this one. Action. I'm, I'm really happy with the film, so um, I still had all my old footage and I got these computers and I got to retransfer everything. So um, I'm really, really satisfied uh, with the newer cuts and with the footage that we got to use that Christopher had shot with. And we used this at the beginning with the credits rolling over because originally in the short film, it's very jittery, you know, because the transfer was like so. And um, the titles are now burned over the images of, you know, Little Andy taking off and they're headed to the forest. We get to see the setting where this is taking place. So it really helped a lot, you know, and I'm really, really happy with this cut and the sound is way better and the end credit music is way better. And um, now we have this, you know, we get to show you guys how we made this a little bit, you know, some of the footage that Roger had taken with his trusted little camera. So um, I hope you guys really enjoyed the film. If you haven't watched it, I hope you guys watch, enjoy it when you watch it and uh, keep a lookout for the, for the feature length version when it comes out in 2006 and uh, hopefully I'll meet you guys uh, at the film festival. Thanks a lot. Don't cut.